No fewer than 618 schools have remained closed in six northern states over the fear of attack and abduction of pupils and members of staff. Meanwhile, attackers have stormed a primary school in the northwestern uh, part of the Nigerian state of Kaduna and seized three teachers, but no children. Well, to discuss this with me is an educationist, and she is a co-founder of and trustee of the Education Reform Innovation Team, Bolaji Osime. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Um, two weeks ago, I did talk about the fact that it was important for us to have safe spaces for children to learn um, and be educated. But unfortunately, this is fast, um, you know, becoming something that our children are afraid of. Children don't want to go to school anymore. And now states are shutting down schools. Um, as an educationist, how does this um, rub off you? Because, of course, children in Nigeria, we have so many, I, I think 30, 13 plus out of school children. We're trying to get these children back in classes. And this happens. Where do we go from here? Yeah, I think this is such a serious problem. Actually, um, when I saw the video of the children crying and pleading for their lives, it really broke my heart. As a mother and, and an educationist and somebody who is really, really passionate about education in Nigeria, my heart broke in many, many pieces. You know, our nation is a big complex. I mean, we've been put together since 1914, you know, through, that's the video and it's such a sad one. Mm. You know, we've been put together as a nation, we're about 200 million of us you know, since 1914. And we have a population that is bulging and growing every day. But we have to band together. We have to come together. You know, there's no north, there's no north, south as far as we're concerned. When our children are in danger, they are our children. So one of the things that we need to do urgently as a nation, you know, when the pandemic struck last year, we all came together. We all came together because we had a common enemy and we fought this common enemy. The government set up the presidential task force immediately to fight the pandemic. And today we have the vaccines. Where is the presidential task force for this kidnapping that is going on? You know, government has to come together. Everybody has to come together. We, it is not about the North. It's not about the South. It's about the Nigerian child. Hmm. The Nigerian child is being kidnapped and taken from, you know, just from their schools. A school is supposed to be a safe place. Hmm. It's a place where they're supposed to go and learn. And you see them, you know, in, in fear of their life, they're traumatized. So one of the things that we would suggest, I would say, is that government really needs to do something urgently. Just the way we rallied around and we came together, Nigerians are, 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 are in very incredible people. The thing about it is that we can actually take the bull by the horn. I don't understand how come we cannot resolve this issue. And why is it taking so long, so, so many years? I remember last year, around October, you know, and um, there was an American that was kidnapped in, I think, Niger or somewhere in Nigeria. And immediately this, um, the, the US um, troops came in, you know, the Pentagon announced within a week, this American was released within a week. They swooped into Nigeria, they took out their, their citizen, and that was it. But we're having our children who have been kidnapped for years and years, and we don't even, and we, we're not getting them back. If we must value the life of a Nigerian, every Nigerian is very, very valuable. So we, if we value ourselves and we value our life, particularly our children who have no other protection except for the adults to protect them, then government has to rise immediately and do something about it. And of course, it's enshrined in our, in, in our constitution as well, that the security of life is so critical in the constitution and government is responsible to secure every single Nigerian, male, female, child, adult, everyone. So I don't, I, I, I don't understand sometimes, you know, what's going on at this stage. Um. Again, I, I, when we say government, you know, it, it's very easy for us to, and I'm not in any way trying to absolve the federal government of the, its responsibility, but these things are happening in states. Why do you think that the state governments are approving for these schools to be shut down? Does this mean that maybe it's beyond them and that's why they're saying schools should be shut down? Because, I mean, there are supposed to be... Let, we have security operatives or security outfits that are... Uh, almost like the police, that are supposed to support and help the police. And in all of this, we still have, let's not forget, we have the NSCDC, and these people are armed. Why is the state unable? I'm, I know that you're not a security operative, but there can be a synergy of sorts with these schools to protect them instead of waiting for these students to be abducted, and then we start looking for ways to get them back. So 
Is it too hard or not to crack to deal with internal security in schools, or is it that we do, there might just not be manpower enough to do this? I think, I think the problem we have is a bigger problem than just the security with the schools. I think it's a hydra-headed monster that we have that we're dealing with. It started with the kidnapping, and you know, it, it actually, in, we, I remember in Port Harcourt in those days how expatriates were kidnapped and, people, and a lot of people were kidnapped, and nothing was done about it. So I think it has become such a big problem that it has, it, it is, um, it's something that the state security is not empowered, I don't think. We don't have community policing in Nigeria. I think it's the federal that, that sort of controls, is centralized. So the police in the states themselves are so overwhelmed with what they have to deal with. And there's so many schools in so many of those states and they're in the urban, they're in the rural area. So I think we have a monster, a hydra-headed monster that has sprung up from various, various reasons. And some of the reasons could be, uh, you know, looking at um, joblessness, you know, you're looking at uh, political issues, looking at corruption, looking at uh, the fact that, you know, we, we don't have enough penalty for some of this um, when this happens. So I think government needs to look at a more holistic picture. We need to look at it on a bigger level, not just, oh, states, can you secure? After the fact, is that you know, the train has left the station. So we need to go back now and say, what can we do? We have to work together, both states, federal, local community, local government, churches, religious organizations, uh, mosque, churches, everybody needs to come back, come together. The corporate organization, uh, the private sector, everybody needs to come to the table today because this thing is already on our doorstep. You know, everywhere, not just apart from schools being, um, students being ab abducted, you're finding adults being adopted. You are finding uh, people going to their homes on, in, in buses being adopted. So this thing is really out of it. So we need to come together, I would say. Because I'm sure this thing can be dealt with if we all can come together and say, look, what cost us? How do we nip this in the bud? Yes, let us look at our security, uh, uh, what we have in terms of security. Let us look at community policing. Let us secure our schools much better. Let us look at what is happening. Why are these young boys doing what they're doing? Are they, why are they this Because they, they're Nigerians as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, everybody says Fulani headsmen, but they're Nigerians. And what are, why are they doing what they're doing? Some of them, I saw some videos, they said they, they don't have any means of livelihood. We need to look at our education sector very carefully. We need to prepare our young people. A lot of the young people that have not had skills and had not access to education had joined Boko Haram and they had joined some of the bandits. So it's such, it's such a big picture, it's a big problem that it, you cannot just limit it to states. It has to be federal, how do we overhaul the educational system? When you look at some of the schools that um, they were taking the children, they didn't have fences. Some of them didn't have fences and some of them were dilapidated. So mm. this is really pointing to the fact that this sector needs to be overhauled. We need to pay attention to what's happening in our schools. We need to pay attention to our young people. Our young people must be safe. They must be able to go to schools. And if we're not able to do anything about it now, then let us shut down the schools, particularly the boarding schools. Let us make sure they have fences. Let us make sure we have security around them. We cannot afford to lose our young ones anymore. So I would say that it is a more holistic thing that we need. We need innovative and exceptional leadership at this time. Huh. We need a very creative le um, leadership that will come up with different solutions to say, oh, let us all come together. Let us see how we can deal with this. Because how will, you know, so many people are talking about this all over the world, you know, and it's becoming quite the, uh, a situation. Let's bring it down to psychology now. Um, I I'll give you an example and then I'll tell you why I'm asking. For example, um, the young boy, the young American who went to um, a cinema and shot people, shot at people. Of course, it took time for people to want to go back out to cinemas in that city. Yeah. So let's paint that same picture with the schools in these parts where um, the abductions are taking place. You already have a certain people of a certain faith or a certain religious understanding or traditional understanding that is, you know, the, the children don't need education. And we have tried to some point to get them to allow these children to come back, to come to schools by introducing a feeding, a school feeding system, which has let people open their doors and let their children to school. How do you now deal with the psychology of those parents who, number one, are filled with fear? How do you also deal with the psychology of a child who is wary of going to school because he or she has gone through, um, you know, one of those abductions and come back? Would they really want to go back to school? So is there a plan to deal with how people feel and reintegrate them back into everyday life? 
Yes, I remember there was the Safe School Initiative that was initiated by the British government. And the whole idea of the Safe School Initiative is to ensure, and, this, and they donated quite a bit of money, is to ensure that our schools are safe. Don't forget also we had the IDP, in, you know, we had the conflict zones and a lot of the kids were taken away and they have come back and they've been reintegrated back to society. Children are very vulnerable and they, they even during the pandemic, you know, a lot of them who are isolated from their friends were psychologically affected, let alone if a gun is pointed into your face. I mean, how do you get over that? So there's a need to have a trauma, emotional, psychological counseling, very, very important. We have to have all of this ready for our schools to make sure that all those young people that are taken away, when they come back, to integrate them into society, some of them have been away for years. You cannot, they, they can, you know, they've been around guns, they've been around grenades. You know, so, you know, it's so traumatic. That's why it's, it's so worrisome, honestly, that uh, this should happen in Nigeria. We are very loving people. We love each other. And we cannot ignore the fact that these kids are going through trauma. If they were your own children, I mean, how would you feel? I mean, I always look at them and think, if it was my child going through this, I would go berserk. So it's important that we must place value on these lives. This is the future of Nigeria. All these young people who we're showing here, they're the ones coming to build this nation. These are the Zuckerbergs. These are the Bill Gates. And they're out there on their own without their parents. So it's so critical that when they come back, they need to be reintegrated. They need to be, uh, you know, they need to be assured that we love them. They have to have super counselors around them. Just like after the pandemic, that's what we did in our schools. We looked at their emotional setups. Our teachers were trained to make sure they talked to them. How do you feel? Some of them lost their loved ones. They lost their fathers. They lost, lost their mothers. So schools have to be equipped. Government, local governments have to be equipped. We cannot, they're human beings. You know, we cannot just, oh, they're children and therefore they'll get over it. No. They're not going to get over it. Some of them have indoctrinated. They have seen all manners of things. They've seen people killed. So how are they going to? So, so to avoid them getting hardened and trying to do the same thing to others, we have to bring them back and reintegrate them back into society, I think. How soon do you think that's going to happen, especially when now it looks like government has a lot on their plates? Is that going to be yes. a top priority or is that going to be on the bottom of the list? That's, that's why I said this assignment is for everybody everybody. There are a lot of NGOs. There are a lot of um, um, uh, 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 what to call the uh, foreign you know, organizations that come, development agencies. There are a lot of local government. There are churches everywhere. There are mosques everywhere. There are human people. Nigerians have to. We are many of us. So we cannot leave this job to government. We are very happy to come. Anything that happens like this, education reform team, we are happy to band around to help government to work on their policies. You know, we need to look at policies. Like I said, we need to look at policies and ensure our policies are implemented. A lot of people are happy to come to the north, even from the south, to come and work with IDP. And a lot of them went, churches went to, the, to, the, to, to IDP camps. So Nigerians are ready to help each other. God should just give us the, I'm sorry, um, government should give us the enabling environment environment and once they give us an enabling environment a lot of people there are many missionaries in the in in, uh, in the north right now because i know it's quite a few of them who are there looking after idp camps a lot of foreigners are coming so it's a it's something that we all have to do together it cannot be left to federal government state government also should look at inwardly as well they should look inwardly and say okay how can we help how can we use what we have corporate organizations have to come on the table as well Everybody has to be part of this. We have to resolve this problem very, very quickly. Because if we don't, it can escalate more than this. You know, now we're having it in the, in the, in the north. God forbid it spreads to the whole of Nigeria. And that's why we must wake up now, deal with this problem. They cannot continue to take our children away. They cannot continue to hold them as ransom. They cannot be pawns because of what is happening. It cannot happen. We all have children. We must be compassionate and passionate about the fact that if it was my child out there, I'll be out there looking for my child. So everybody must stand up and everybody, every voice must be heard right now to ensure we solve this problem. Very, very critical. Um, let's talk about trust finally before I let you go. Um, the government had told us two, three abductions ago that it was going to be the last time that something of this nature would happen. Uh, especially in Zamfara State, there was a no-fly zone declared over Zamfara. Um, there was a shoot at sight um, given by Mr. President. I mean, the, uh, the um, NSA boss read a riot attack to all and sundry. How do you want the average person, and I'm, not, I'm talking about everybody, whether it be a parent or children, to... Um, trust the government that they will do whatever it takes within their powers um, to 
to make sure that we have safe spaces again. Yes, of course, if government does not give us a nod, we cannot just pack our bags and go to the north and say we want to volunteer. There has to be the enabling mm. environment. And if yeah. it took the government this long to deal with this issue, which people have been screaming since last year about, I mean, this enabling environment that we're asking, how can we trust that government will make it happen for us? And I think that's why, you know, I think as Nigerians, we rely too much on government. That's the thing, you know, because government itself but, is but isn't the system isn't the system they great? Must, they isn't must, the system tailored the in things, a way that huh? it makes us all so reliant on federal government to create the enabling yes. environment for us? So that's why I'm saying that there's a need. That's why I said policies need to change. So government also knows that they cannot deal with this alone. Like in the US, it's the government, it's the, it's the state government that deals with terrorism at the state level when it happens, although FBI comes into it. But government must know that they need help at this moment. And that's why they're saying to state governments as well. And state governments, you know, there's, there, definitely there's a way to collect intelligence that they have. Everybody has their own intelligence um, in their state government. But I think it's important, like I said, the problem is it's a hydra-headed monster. If you solve the symptoms and you don't look at the root causes, then we're not going to get the solution. Some people should be looking at the root causes. Some people should be looking at what, why is this happening? Some people should be looking at implementing short-term, medium-term, and long-term solutions. We need to look at it in different dimensions. We cannot just look at it and let us stop. Oh, government comes out and says, it's not going to happen again. How, you know, it's not, that's, 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 that, that will make you feel at ease. But if, as a business person, I know, that if there's a problem, I need to dimension it. I'm, I need to look at it from different angles. Why are these young men kidnapping? Why, what can I stop, stop them apart from you know, penalties and ensuring that the court system works? What can I do to ensure that they have jobs? How can I educate them and give them skills? When the SARS happened in Lagos, it was because a lot of them were not without jobs. You know, so it's not, it's, it's, it comes out in different um, ways in different parts of the uh, of the country. Yes, there's certain sect that says you must not. We don't like education, but majority the bandits right now. What are they asking for money? Mm. It, it has become an economic thing. So that's what I'm saying. That if we go back to our drawing boards as educators, we will go back to our drawing boards and say, how do we make sure every single Nigerian, a Nigerian who is 10 years old, if you don't ensure that he's equipped with education and skills, we grow up and become a bandit. It will grow up and, and be hired by Boko Haram. So we need to go back to the drawing board and solve this problem. 200 million today, by 2015, we're going to be 400 million. What are we going to do? Do you understand? So we need to tackle the problem. We need Let, to tackle. And I really pray that um, God helps us. God, 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 we pray to um, God in Nigeria, and I really pray that this stops as well, because there's a part of the spiritual that we have to pray that whatever is happening in our nation, God should just help us to deal with it, because all human beings are very valuable to God. So we're also praying and, you know, doing what we can in the physical. All right. Well, Bola Josime is a co-founder and trustee uh, for Education Reform Innovation Team. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We thank you. It. Thank you for having me. Okay, great. Well, thank you all for staying with us, but we'll take a short break to see what Nigerians have to say about the closure of schools in the North. Um, and then when we come back, I'll give you my take. Why were you not schooling? For a country to be in a situation where the government is shutting down schools, it means that the government is not doing its job because the primary responsibility of government is to protect lives and property. And if the lives and property of the citizens are not being protected, then the government is basically not doing its job. And if they have to resort to closing down schools and putting down putting the, the future of uh, the country at risk because the young, the, the young ones are the, the ones that determine how the future of the country will be. And if you don't allow them to go to school, or you put them in a situation where they cannot be able to gain the right education as the years go by, you have a situation where in the future, because they did not attend the schools and because they were not properly taught, they might become, um, it becomes possible for them to be recruited into this kind of uh, uh, insurgency that is going on in the north and then you have more insurgents being bred. I don't think it's right um, because they need to be educated and uh, for doing that, I think they should just provide more security for them, for their safety, while they go about their, their, their studies. Well, the closure of school, if you look at it from one angle, it's a good move, but on the whole, it's an indication that uh, the government is overwhelmed, almost uh, completely helpless. 
do not forget the responsibility, one basic responsibility of government is the protection of lives and uh, property. So if they are unable to do so, that it means there's a problem in the land. So if closing school would be a, is, a, is a means or is a measure by the government to ensure that uh, students are protected, well, all good and fine. But like I mentioned, it's an indication that the government has, uh, is overwhelmed. I just think sometimes when you are not sure what you do next, you just um, bring up some kind of emergency measures. Probably that's what they have just done. So perhaps we are only hoping, they have been fighting all this while, they've not been able to do something, um, something, they've not been able to find a solution. Perhaps, maybe when the children are at home, yeah, they may feel safe at home, but the truth is that at home, we are not sure these abductions can still occur within the community. So um, it may not be the best, but maybe the children might feel, the parents might feel their children are safer at home. Here's my take. Two weeks ago, I advocated for policing of our schools, protecting education spaces for our children. Now, two weeks down the line, these bandits and terrorists are unrelenting in their bid to make money off these soft targets such as students and knowing that nothing will be done to them. This is the hard part. Now, it's become an everyday affair where, you know, one person, two persons, 300 persons or more are being taken. Safety is no longer a thing that we can rely on. Now, well, everybody's being left to their fate. So once again, I call on our government, Mr. President, and all the governors to be more assertive, more proactive. Let's dialogue with these schools and teachers and find out how we can partner with states and security agencies to keep our schools safe. Yes, we're going to shut down, but for how long? We can't keep waiting for people to be abducted and then we react. We need to stop these terrorists and we need to stop them now. I'm Mariana Kohn thanking you for watching. It's been Plus Politics. Have a good evening.